Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to explore a new feature in Adobe CC 2017, that is the Cinema 4D 3D Render Engine. It allows us to extrude things and really leverage Cinema 4D rendering power inside of After Effects without ever leaving the application. But without further ado, let's get some chocolate in our peanut butter, some peanut butter in our chocolate. That sounds really gross, but let's get some Cinema 4D inside of After Effects and open that program now. You can see... It looks pretty nice. This is a nice looking extrusion of some letters, some shape layers, very wonderful stuff. If we want to get started doing this ourselves, it's very simple. We just make a new composition, doesn't matter the settings, I don't care. And then you need to make a layer of some kind. And the Cinema 4D 3D render engine, we can extrude both shape layers and text. And text is super simple. We just put some text out there. I just hammer on my keyboard, make some text. Wonderful. Maybe I'll, I'll even make a, a color of text. What do you think of that? Ooh, a fun color. And then all you have to do is make a layer 3D. So you'll notice up here, there isn't an option to change your render engine yet. We just make something 3D and there it is, right up in the corner. Right up there, that's where we gotta look. And this is where you can choose either classic 3D, which has no extruding, but certainly there are some options and you can learn about it. But there's also the option to use ray traced 3D, which is kind of the old, let's say outdated version of this kind of thing, which allows you to extrude and bevel text, gives you reflections, refractions, a whole bunch of things are enabled. A bunch of things are also disabled though. No blending modes, no track mats, no layer styles, no masks and effects on, no bunch of stuff. You're kind of trading off the ability to extrude things and have this real 3D stuff with removing a lot of compositing based options. That's ray trace. And then if you go to Cinema 4D, we throw away a bunch of other things. No motion blur, no camera depth of field, but uh, you know, it still does the extruding and you'll see how much better it is. Let me just get started and we'll do that. So we enable it, wonderful. Now you can twirl down into the layer and you'll see we have geometry options and material options. And these geometry and material options are things like beveling. So we can apply a bevel to it. We can extrude this thing. Notice we're pushing that thing back into space and we can't really sort of tell what's going on too well. So what I'd like to do is just go ahead and make a new light to really show off what's going on. Fairly default settings. And you can see right away, there you go. Got this extruded thing. It's got some shading going on. Wonderful stuff, good, good. So we can extrude that all the way back. You could bevel this thing, so you could give it some bevel depth. Uh, you'll need to pick a style though. Let's try angular, because it's the simplest. And you'll notice that all bevels are applied to the outside of these shapes. And some of them are applied to the inside, which is where this hole depth comes in. And you can see, you know, hole depth of zero, no beveling on the inside whole depth of 100, there is in there. So let's just jack that up. And then you can really see what the difference is. So that's what that's all about. That's extruding, that's beveling. I guess you could make some titles and stuff out of this. It's a very easy way to add a little bit of depth to stuff though. And before, if you used classic method, you would have to duplicate the layer, push it back in 3D space, do some stuff to it. Now you can do it for real and it has real live sides on it. What do I mean by real live sides? I mean, I can put this anchor point in the middle, I can rotate this thing and we can look at the end of it and it has stuff there, it's terrific. So that's what happens when you extrude these things. And speaking of the sides, if I delete this light, nothing's really telling me that this side is extruded in some way. What I could do, I mean, except for it taking up that space, but what I can do is I can go to the text, I can say animate, and then I can say animate the side. I'm not really gonna animate the side, but you'll see what happens. Animate the color. Let's change the brightness. And I take that brightness down. And suddenly I'm able to put a little stuff on there. I can put a little, little depth just by changing the color of the sides. It's pretty wonderful stuff. I don't even have a light in the scene and we can tell what's going on. And since it's something you can animate, you can actually go, uh, go like this and you can actually animate the sides and the faces and everything changing. So. That's how we do this with text if we wanted to. So good for us, we did it. If we want to do this with shape layers, it is the same thing. So we would go new 
shape layer. You might import some shape layers. You might have some vector stuff. I'm just going to double click up here, which makes a shape layer, makes a rectangle sweet. And I'm going to do all of my shape layer animating before we make things 3D. That's helpful to save yourself some grief. So you want to work with it in 2D and then extrude it just because you're spending a lot of machine resources on stuff you don't really need to deal with until later. So I'm just kind of put these things in an order that will be helpful to you. So what I think I want to have happen is have kind of a frame pop up. So let's toggle off the transparency grid there. And uh, I'd like this some kind of like a frame to pop in, maybe like a boxy looking thing. So what I'll do is I'll link the size together. Let's start it at a size of zero. That could be fun. We'll move ahead a few frames, 30 frames or so, and then it can come up to size 500. Sweet. The other thing I would like is to add another rectangle, or maybe I'll just duplicate this rectangle and have it come up to a size that is a little bit smaller, maybe like a 450. Cool. And let me just add a merge paths to this. So I'm I'm merging these two paths together. I'm saying U subtract U is this new shape. And uh, what does that mean? Well, it just looks like this expanding. I'm not very thrilled with that. So let's have the outside. I'm just accessing the uh, graph editor here and I'm going to easy ease these. So keyframe assistant, easy ease or use the shortcuts. I got them all wired up to a mouse. It's pretty quick for me. So we're gonna go into the graph editor, push this handle like so, give it a little bit of a, a ramp so it starts fast and gets slow. And then we've got the inside of the box here, which kind of trails. So it kind of comes up like that. Interesting, interesting. I'm just easing those. So it's kind of an easy wee coming up like this. That's okay. Maybe I want to push it so that this comes up and then that kind of snaps up to be with it. Interesting in two dimensions. Sure, I guess, maybe. Let's add that third dimension though. So I'm gonna make it 3D. If yours isn't set to Cinema 4D rendering stuff, make sure you're on the Cinema 4D right there, good. And if you're having trouble with yours, like, oh, it's so slow, well, you can always take this down to draft level detail. You can push it up to extreme level. So the default is around 25, and that's good enough for most people for what they're doing. So this allows us to have not only our contents, but also we can have some geometry options, meaning we can we can have, uh, maybe we want this thing to uh, have an extrusion depth of maybe 50. That sounds like a good enough number. I'm gonna look at this from custom view one so we can kind of see that frame. Oh yeah, that's a good look. So that's a good extrusion depth. I'm gonna set a keyframe, click on the stopwatch there. I'm gonna go back to the beginning here and set it at zero. And what I would like this to do, I'm easy easing them again. So it's gonna come up and it's just gonna ease itself kind of like that. That's not super exciting for me. I'm not thrilled by this. What I would like it to do is to come up and be too large and then retract back. So how about I go into the graph editor and instead of looking at a speed graph like we have been doing, I'm gonna look at a value graph. And on this value graph, let me just uh, see here, zoom to see the whole thing. I'm just gonna pull this handle here, we all the way back to the beginning, so that its influence, it's very influential, I'll take this first one and push it up like this. So what I'm telling the graph editor is, I would like for this to go beyond and then come back to 50. So what does that look like? Looks like it's exploding up, and then eventually coming to rest. Everything's coming to rest. So it has kind of a kind of a bursting onto the scene look. One thing I don't like about it though is that it's moving away from the camera. I want it to come towards the camera. That's what I'm that's what I'm looking for. And in fact, maybe I'll just go like eh, nah, that's good the way it is. So we'll go like this a little bit, kind of push these things so it's coming out and then coming back. Good. And like I said, I want this to come towards the camera. So I should make a new camera, at least. Make the 50 millimeter preset, cool. And you can see that it's pushing away from the camera. I could fix this by rotating this 180 degrees if I wanted to, but if I had a more complex shape that I didn't want to rotate or flip or any of these things, 
I would want it to be pushing the front towards the camera rather than pushing the back away from the camera, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit A, go into the anchor point, hold down Alt and create an expression. And this expression, I would like to tie into some of those values I've changed. So I'm gonna hit AA and I'm just gonna pull up. So I've got the anchor point, it's here, it's waiting to get an expression. And I'm gonna to wanna to link that somehow to the extrusion depth. So I'm gonna say, anchor point, how about you be the value that you are, because you're perfect the way you are, except for this change, and then add within square brackets, zero comma zero comma, and then just pick whip to that extrusion depth. So what I'm saying is, let's use your value, perfectly fine, and then we're gonna to add to it nothing for the X, nothing for the Y, and then add the geometry extrusion depth to the Z, which has the compelling effect of having it now push the front forward, because if we look at this from the top, that's just, it's making the anchor point always that far back. So it's, it's always far enough back to make that happen. Good, let's look at this, not from the top, but from the active camera, so we can see what that looks like. I'm just gonna hit N, just do a little quick renderino here. Right now it's not super compelling, it's lacking some stuff. You know what it's lacking? A new solid, solid. So let's get a new solid out there, make it the comp size, sweet put it behind everything, make it 3D. Now we can't see anything, so now we're gonna make a new light so that we can cast some shadows, so we need to get some light in the scene, boom. And as soon as we get that out there, things are looking a little bit nicer now. And now I think we'll bring this up like so, push it over here, bring it up here. You can see it's kind of casting shadows a little bit, but by default, if I hit AA again to bring up the geometry and material options, we don't have casting shadows on by default. So we're gonna hit, yeah, please cast those shadows. So now it's got these lovely soft shadows, terrific. And a lot of that is defined by this light, which we go into the light and you can see it's got shadow darkness. It's got the shadow diffusion. It's all super good. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay on that. Now we're just gonna give this a quick little render so you can see what's going on. And yeah, I think that's looking pretty neat. It's kind of coming up off of the off of the stuff here. Wonderful, wonderful things. Maybe we, if we don't want to use the light, we could position it somewhere else, make it a little bit more subtle. You know, we could do all kinds of things. The world is your oyster. But when you are working with these things, it's important to really remember that the more lights you put in the scene, the more triangles you're asking it to render, the more difficult it becomes. So you might at some point ask it to do something that really hurts your machine. You're gonna to wanna to have this adaptive resolution on to make things a little bit easier for yourselves. If things get a little wonky and it looks pixelated, just turn that off so you see what the final version would look like. Uh, so when you're working, keep your detail level low and keep your adaptive resolution on. It's just very helpful to make things work out. Um, and while this is all very well and good, ooh, we've made a square, whoop de woo super great, you don't have to just make basic primitives. Uh, for this kind of thing, you know, what, what are we really saving, right? What if I told you, you could make like a cell phone looking thing. So you could make a, like an iPhone maybe. So what's an iPhone? Well, an iPhone is just a rounded rectangle, isn't it? So if I go to this rounded rectangle and then we just kind of go, like 500 by something. I don't know what, a, what the dimensions of one of these phones bees. Mm -hmm. Let's say we do like this. Let's say we go make this a little bit more rounded, kind of a cartoonish looking phone. We take this, we take this fill, we make it black because that's the color of iPhones, isn't it? Then we could give go to this. We could add another rectangle to it. Fun, fun. Give it a screen. So we're gonna wanna punch a hole in this. By merging the paths. Merging the paths together means subtracting, please. And then we just want to kind of define this a little bit. <laughs> Increase this. Oh boy, that's kind of a big screen, isn't it? So let's go just tweak our numbers. Tweak, tweak, tweak. Make it all, make it all real good. Super nice. All right, so that could be an iPhone screen, I guess. Uh, why don't we also add to this a ellipse, an ellipse. Yeah, that sounds better. 
and move that down here because that's where the button's going to be at. You got to have them buttons. It's crucial. Crucial have buttons or else the phone probably won't work. Anyway, just tweaking it up. Everything's, everything's fun. Everything's loose. So if this is the case of the phone, well, then you would want to make that 3D. You would want to extrude that, we assume. So let's extrude that by like 50. Cool. Then we can, uh, instead of looking at the active camera, look at it like this. That's neat, but I feel like the edges of this thing could use a little work. Eh? Touch up those edges, right? I'll just make this a little bit more, a little more gray, I think. Cool. What we can do now, just like we did with the text, is we can alter the edges of this thing. So let me just can go to the contents, pick the group we want, add side color, and you see it's adding this color to all the sides. So what I would like to do is to pick that color, but just make it maybe a little bit brighter. You might make it with a little bit of color. I don't totally know. But look at this. Look at this. Now it's got color on the sides. We don't even have a light. This is wonderful. So we'll call this the case, maybe. But what we can do is we can uh, create another rectangle out there. Wonderful. Make it 3D. Cool. Uh, I'm going to make it like a light color. And I think you see where this is going, that I'm going to just shrink this down to be within the bounds of this thing. Cool. And then shrink it down. See if we expand this up like so. Ooh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Ooh, keep going, keep going. Pop, 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 beep, boop. Oh, we're getting a little bit of texture ripping, and that's to be expected because we have it right now located right on the surface, which we do not want. Change the position here, put this to 20. Lock this to this, wonderful. So now, if we go back to the active camera, this pretty cool looking phone, if we go and we rotate this thing, you would see, oh, it's got like a screen or whatever. Oh boy, we're doing it. It's working for real. We've made a thing. And you could make like a separate button. You could make the button pop in and out. You could make a pre-comp and put it where the screen is. That could be fun. But little warning, you cannot use track mats in here. Track mats are disabled. Can't do those. So if you want to have you know, some defining of where the alpha is for these things. You can't, you can't do that in here. That's, that's a different thing. That's a separate thing. What you would probably end up doing is pre-composing this kind of thing if you wanted to use blending modes and putting it into a different composition and then blending stuff there. But that's about it. Go out there and start extruding and making stuff with that. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed learning this little bit about After Effects and the new stuff in Adobe CC 2017, please subscribe to this channel. We try to stay on top of what's new and interesting in the Adobe world, and we try to put out content when possible. Possible. So subscribe to the channel if you want to get some of that. If you have questions about this uh, renderer, anything we talked about, please ask questions in the comments. I try to get back to them whenever possible. And if you have questions about After Effects or motion design in general, hit me up on the Twitter at EC Abrams or leave me a message on the channel or on the Facebook group. Links to all that stuff is in the description. If you want to poke around at this file, it is available for download. Again, links, description, descriptions full of links. It's a good spot. If you enjoyed what you're seeing, if you like learning about motion graphics, motion design, After Effects, subscribe to this channel. And if you do that, I will see you around the internet. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.